Sanding in its overview was one of the largest uh, disasters the American Red Cross had responded to. Thirteen states were affected. Um, millions of people, millions of powder, power outages, and I believe, um, I know that the damage, the total damage in New York was um, about 41 billion and in New Jersey, I think $36 billion. Um, it wasn't until we took the trip to Staten Island that we realized how huge of a disaster it was. We stayed on a military ship off the, off the coast because there was nowhere we could stay on the island. It was so completely destroyed. There's practically no street left that makes this point accessible. Um, there are fires burning in the area and for first responders to get there, it's been completely cut off. Um, we are hoping there are no people still in these homes because there's not much left. I didn't expect we would see homes, you know, off of their foundations um, and in the middle of state highways. I started out in Manhattan at a homeless shelter. Uh, city of New York has over a hundred homeless shelters and they too were greatly affected. Um, so this was a high school that was turned into um, a place to bring the people from a homeless shelter. Um, and then I went to Staten Island and I was there most of my time. I was working at a hospital, Bailey Seton Hospital on Staten Island. Um, and there we had over a hundred clients and over 30 animals. We were staying in a, in a, a motel without light and water, or without light and heat. And one woman said, I'm staying at the hotel, one of the workers said, I'm staying at the hotel tonight because my house is underwater. They've lost a lot of their memories that have been stored in uh, scrapbooks, videos, slides, memories of a whole lifetime. And my team or the folks that accompany us as part of the mental health activity, try to help those people begin the process of putting their lives back together again from the emotional aspect. I was in mass care and sheltering. Um, so that means I work at the client shelters, which are usually high schools or churches or hospitals. Um, we take care of the, the clients. Uh, we provide food, um, mental health, and any, just any moral support that they might need um, running, running the shelter, pretty much. So. We would stand around in the cold at the kitchen for a couple hours waiting to get loaded up and they would send us somewhere and we'd go back to the kitchen and they'd give us a new route and we'd go out again. So we did a lunch run and a dinner run every day. Some days we didn't get home until 11 p.m. The whole operation, I think nobody understands, except the Red Cross maybe, what a difficult situation responding to an emergency can be. You have thousands of people called and being organized and working together on a moment's notice. It's almost impossible for things to work smoothly because of everybody just getting there and just doing their job. And amazingly, out of all that chaos, it happens. People say, why did you do this? And the question is, if I don't do it, who will? You, you start off volunteering because you want to help other people. But it is a very fulfilling thing. It feeds your soul. It gives you a sense of satisfaction. So you might start off because you want to help other people, but you kind of get addicted to the feel-good feeling that you get from doing that. I do what I do with and for the American Red Cross because of its principles. There's seven, but the core of which are neutrality, impartiality, and humanity. I don't think it was as much of the because it was me, the person I am, but because of the patch on my vest. People trust the Red Cross and that was a great responsibility to feel and it made me made all of us rise to the occasion and, and try and do what we could to contribute. Whenever there's a need we're there and we're there until the need is over.